Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Now I am out here at the farm at Ross Rider Country House as I often am on a bit of an adventure. You know, what I'm planning to do tonight is to shoot multiple locations around this place. And to be honest, I'm setting myself a fair old task indeed. There is a prediction of some clear sky later on and that's what I'm hoping for. So in the meantime, I'm going to show you around what I'm going to be doing. So I'm looking at time lapse and some other various um, shots, even get the tracker out. Let's go. Right, so in October, here in Australia, in the Southern Hemisphere, the Milky Way Galactic Core sets over in that Western sky and it comes down nicely, just so happens, right over the top of this hay shed. So my plan, is to get my uh, 14 to 24 f 2.8 lens here on the Nikon Z6 Mark II and shoot just a very simple time lapse. All right, so this is about the position that I wanted to put my tripod. You'll notice for this particular composition, the Milky Way Galactic Core comes down directly over this shed here, and it's a perfect time of year for that to happen, not long after sunset. And we've got that beautiful zodiacal light as well because it's fairly soon after the sun has set. Okay, so what I've decided to do is uh, set my camera to f2.8, which is wide open for this. I'm going to be shooting 13 second shutter speeds and I've got the interval set inside the camera here at 15. So basically what that means is 13 second shutter speed, two second gap between each shot. I've loaded in 700 into my intervalometer internal intervalometer in the camera. So it's the interval shooting mode on the Nikon Z6 Mark II camera. So 700 images, that's gonna take me about three and a half hours to shoot. But the other major thing about this is how am I going to light this? Remember, it's gonna be completely dark. So I'll just give you a very brief run through of the lighting setup for this shot. Firstly, I've got a light stand here and I've got a Ulanzi VL49 video light. And these are a multi-color changing light, nice and small, lightweight, and dimmable. So I'm gonna put it up high, as high as it goes. And as you can see, this light is 15 to 20 meters, roughly, away from the shed. So my second light is here, placed on this old tank. Magnets on the back, just stick it on there, something like that. That gives me a beautiful cross light along the scene, but I've got two more to go. One of the things that I love is to embrace the junk and highlight some of these areas because in the big picture, it actually looks pretty good. I need to get a light down here somehow to light up here without actually being visible in the shot. So I put it over here in this junk. All right, so I've got a couple more lights to go down here. The first one I'm going to place here is this Andua. It's an LED color changeable light panel. Quite a good little LED panel. And you know, the thing I love most about these lights is that you can have them on a very low level. So all I've done here is stuck it down here on this old sheet of metal with a piece of wood propping it up. I think you can see my camera way off over there in the distance. That's how far away we are. And that light is enough on about a 2% level to light this tree and also that silo and some of the, the ground and so forth around here. So I've just got one more light to go, and that's a Z96. You know I love these lights. Nice dimmable right down low. And I'll put that just over here on this other sheet of iron, probably about here somewhere. And that basically is facing up into the roof of the shed here because it gives a little bit more ambience. It actually shows off the framework of the shed up there. And that's my main reason for doing it. So now we have a total of four lights. In the meantime though, I'm gonna show you my next setup. I'm pretty ambitious, I'm gonna do another time lapse after this one. So, let's go. Owners of the farm here have been renovating this particular shed, and it's very important to them. So I decided I'd shoot a time lapse here. So this time, I've got my same camera, because I'm gonna shoot this one after the other one. Put it down here, about in this orientation, basically northeast. And what's up there? After midnight tonight, Orion's gonna come up, rise up over the top of the shed here. Now I'm hoping I get reasonable weather. 
So I've got my camera down here, Z6 Mark II, 14 to 24 Nikon uh, Z f2.8. Set to 14 mil, I'm gonna be shooting about 700 frames at 13 second shutter speeds, ISO 5000 at f2.8. And I'm gonna light this up very similar to the last shots. So here we are in the back of the shed and I found this old roller bearing. It's not gonna do much rolling, but anyway, there it is. Because I need something to sit my Z96 on and that is a perfect match. I'm just gonna sit it down here on this platform, put my light there, and then I can enable that light to be on a very low level and just shine across the inside rafters of the shed here. And I love corrugated iron because you get that scallop shape and when the light hits it you get the highlights on the top and the shadows in the middle and i think that always looks pretty good all right so i decided i needed another light in here so i'll get my um andour light panel and we're just going to sit it over here just propped up against something and you can see the the cart is out here in the background now the reason i want to put that light there is so that i get a little bit of backlight on the actual cart out the front there so for me I think that's really important. I don't want to flood it with light. I just want a little tiny bit. So this is only on about 1%. It doesn't need very much light at all. Another little Ulanzi VL49 on a light stand just about here. And we'll put the light stand up nice and high. And once again, I'm gonna angle it up, not down. It's angled up because what you do, you get the feather of the light on the bottom. And when you feather the light, it's softer. And I'm always looking for soft light. But one of the advantages of having a small light like that one up there is it doesn't grab the wind. So I'm going to put a tiny little bit of light on this side wall. Now most of this wall is not even captured on the shot, but enough of it will be to make a difference. So another VL49 on a very low level. It's a metal tank, so I can quite easily just magnetize it on there. Bob is your uncle, have a look at that. It'll just shine across this uh, corrugated iron wall here and I reckon that will make a big difference. Now I did tell you that I was going to be somewhat ambitious with my projects on here at the farm tonight. Well I've got two more that I want to show you in this paddock over here so let's go and have a look. Now have a look at this. I don't know exactly what this is but it's a machine that's been here for a while that I have never actually photographed and I've walked past it many times. Now the reason I haven't photographed it is because it's pretty low down to the ground and well it's just a bit harder than some of the other stuff around here. I've decided I'm going to shoot this because it lines up perfectly once again with that setting Milky Way galactic core. So my intention, I'm going to put my camera just down here, fairly close, probably only three meters away if that. The actual shooting, I'm going to do light painting on the machine, that's not very complicated. Uh, but the other thing I'm going to do is get the Benro Polaris tracker out and I'm going to track the night sky. The Milky Way galactic core up there and to see how that goes. So this is the second subject. Now this one is even harder because it's really low down to the ground. But what this one does do is lines up nicely with the Southern Cross. It's basically facing down towards the south. The Southern Cross is iconic and you've got the Magellanic clouds up there as well. I'll do some light painting on this and I'll do a tracked shot, just a single one tracked shot of the Southern Cross region of the sky, and I'm looking forward to it. So you can see it's really windy down here. So I hope that goes away tonight, but other than that, I'm going inside and we'll continue this journey a little bit later on. As the darkness descended over the farm, I made my way outside and I was pleased to find the sky clearing and the wind dropping. I could see it would be a wonderful night to shoot the stars. As I set up the lights on the old hay shed, I somehow knew this time lapse would be something special. Often during this setup stage, it's easy to rush through the procedure. But in the past when creating time lapses, I've made mistakes by doing this. So I took my time to make sure all the camera settings 
were as they should be. And as well as that, I made sure I enjoyed the view that was unfolding before me. And I hope you like the end result. When I do a track shot of the night sky, I always set up the tracker first, just in case the clouds roll in and I miss the shot, and then I move on to the foregrounds. I was using the Benro Polaris with the intention of shooting a single frame for each of the sky shots for the machinery in the paddock. Everything worked perfectly with the tracker, and to be honest, the clarity and brilliance of the Milky Way in the sky above was distracting me from the technical side of getting all the gear to work. But you know what? I wouldn't want it any other way. The lighting of these foreground subjects always delights me. I guess it's simply the creativity of it all. I really feel connected to these old machines and after a short time, it just seems to flow out of me. It's like I find myself in a zone without time or distraction, and that's just the way I like it. It was pretty late when I set up the final time lapse. I was tired and it was cold. But not to be deterred, I worked out the lighting and set the sequence running. This would take another few hours and I was aware that the weather was changing as clouds appeared on the horizon. But to my delight, I could see the beautiful constellation of Orion rising into the scene just as I'd planned for. As I crawled into bed with my alarm set for about 3 a.m., I wondered if the outcome would be as I imagined. It wasn't long before I had my answer.